Hello and welcome back to Copic in the Craft Room. Michelle Houghton here and I am doing a fun little card today with a stamp set from My Favorite Things. Um, this is a newer set that came out a couple months ago called I'm Owl Yours and of course it came out in conjunction with Valentine's Day. I always have a hard time when they come out the month before. I'm just not quite ready. So <laughs> I have this cute set and I figured even if it's not Valentine's Day, I can still send a card to someone I care about and love and share this or tuck it in my husband's lunch someday and it still means just as much and it might mean a little, even a little more. So I'm gonna put this together. I'm keeping the colors pretty neutral and I figured for the owls, I'd actually use two different earth tone sets to give those owls a little bit different feel. Um, so I'm gonna be working with the E7s and the E8s, that those groups today, and then keeping some muted tones to go with it and the paper background as well. So I'm gonna zoom in and we will get started. So I'm gonna start with E70 and I'm basing the entire female owl in that color. Um, I love the E70 series. It has kind of a purple undertone to it. And so even though it's one of my earth tones, it has a variation to it. Um, the E71 is next. I'm doing some general shading on her body. This is gonna stay really simple, guys. So very basic coloring on this one. E74 is my um, darkest color that I'm adding for my shading. I do some under the wing around that bottom left corner and then her little feathers on her front. I'm doing E79 to add just a little bit of detail onto those feathers and the very darkest spots on her body. So then blending back with E74 and E71. And then E70 to finish to smooth that out. The best part about Copics is even if I don't get it smooth on the first time through, I know I can come back and do some more of that. Now I'm actually going back in with my colorless blender here and lightening up her eyes. I decided I wanted that area to show up just a little bit better and so I'm lightening that area with the colorless blender. He's going to start with an E81. Now in other areas of our Copic coloring, that would mean this is gonna get more desaturated and gray down, but in the earth tones, remember, it's done really just in kind of family groups. So all the E8s have this kind of mossy green feel, which I love, again, so it's kind of fun to use some of these earth tones for some other things. So he's, again, is getting really simple coloring. This is the E84. E87 is the last one in this series, and it comes in for those darker details underneath his body on those little feathers. E84 to blend, and then E81 to smooth out those finishing touches. I'm keeping these guys really simple because they're fun, just simple graphic characters. And then lightening up his eyes again with the colorless blender. He almost looks like he has little glasses on, so that's kind of fun. RV32 is gonna color in the heart. little bit of RV34 to add some shading. Nothing major, just a little bit of shape so it looks a little more three-dimensional and RV32 to soften those areas. So then I'm gonna do, oh, they're little beaks, sorry. Hit those E89 for, oh, for his glasses. And then I'm gonna start underneath them with some shadows and I'm actually gonna go from dark to light. W5 is first, and I'm getting that portion that's right underneath them. So, and then W3 is next, and I'm gonna fill the ground with these warm grays. But notice how it kind of softens as I start going, working my way in and hitting that edge of the W5. W1 is next, and that's gonna fill in the rest of my ground. But again, it's kind of blending as I go, which is, is one nice side benefit of going from dark to light. It does take a little more work. And for some people, it's better to start. And that's why when we teach Copic markers, we always teach work from light to dark and then back. 
because it takes a little more work, a little more practice, but it works just fine. So that W5 shadow with some W3 and W1. And then I've got BG93 is what I'm filling in that background. And really, it's as much as anything, I'm just filling it in. I'm trying to get a nice smooth background. So you can tell I've sped this way up because it's going to take a few minutes to get it done. I'm going over most areas at least three to four times with small circles. And I know that's hard to see at this speed, but that is what I'm doing. Um, and that's going to give me that nice smooth color. And as long as I kind of keep moving my way around my image, it's going to keep it nice and even. It's when I stop and step away and try to come back that I end up with some watermarks where areas have dried. This image allows me to kind of get all the way around pretty easily. So then I'm going to start trimming my image down. This is me whipping together a card. I always laugh when I watch this part because it looks so disorganized and I apologize for that. So I've trimmed him down and then I've got these couple of papers that I really think are fun and match pretty well. But I'm again, I am a very simple card maker. It's layering pattern papers and a card base. If I can, I squish in a couple of doodads to, to liven it up a bit. So I'm trimming down my pattern paper and centering that on there. Originally, I thought I was gonna add kind of a little bit of a tilt. I also am a corner rounder. I like that look, so I get a lot of that. And then I'm grabbing a tool from my craft room real quick. I got a little paper pier piercer. Um, so all I'm doing is going around the entire image and poking some holes to add that appearance of texture. Um, a little looks a little bit like stitching holes. If I had my sewing machine out on my table, it'd be actually faster to do it that way. And then I'm using Express double-sided adhesive that I'm attaching my little guys down with. And I used some foam tape under that first layer of pattern paper and popped that portion up. And then just again, the double-sided adhesive to attach the base layer onto the card. I am gonna stamp a little um, piece in the corner here in a minute. I think I'm off running looking for things to add to my card. And I thought maybe this canvas tag would work, but I don't like how it's covering my little owl. So I scrapped that idea, big surprise. And then I find a piece of the craft cardstock instead. And so I'm going to stamp a little um, saying from the stamp set. And I am going to tack a little brag, brad onto that and make that into a little flag kind of at the bottom. So real simple. So one little card all ready to go. Um, really simple basic coloring today. You'll notice, and I probably talked through, that most of this I do the traditional light to dark, but the shadows underneath and the ground I did from dark to light. Um, just trying a little bit about, little bit of that out in my own work. I really tried to stay with all um, tones that were considerably desaturated, so ones that had higher numbers in them. Um, even when I added those RVs, I went with RV3s, and so they're a little bit desaturated tone. The backgrounds were the warm grays, and then um, that the sky or the background color behind the owls is actually a BG9. And so, again, really desaturated, so grayed down, and hopefully that gave it that look kind of throughout. So kind of going with that with all of my colors that I chose today. Just a fun card, nothing fancy, no tricks, um, but hopefully you enjoy watching Coloring Along. Thanks for joining me this week and have a happy colorful week. If you have not done it yet, make sure to subscribe to our channel, like this video, and as always, ask questions. I'm listening. Lastly, join us over at Copic in the Craft Room on Facebook for loads of Copic and crafting inspiration.